You're listening to Weird Medicine with Dr. Steve on the Riotcast Network, riotcast.com. I've got diphtheria crushing my esophagus. I've got Ebola virus dripping from my nose. I've got the leprosy of the heart valves exacerbating my incredible woes. I want to take my brain out and blast with the wave, an ultrasonic, echographic, and a pulsating shave. I want a magic pill for all my ailments, the health equivalent to Citizen Kane. And if I don't get it now in the tablet, I think I'm doomed and I'll have to go insane. I want a requiem for my disease, so I'm paging Dr. Steve. Dr. Steve! It's Weird Medicine, the first and still only uncensored medical show in the history of broadcast radio, now a podcast. I'm Dr. Steve, and this is a show for people who would never listen to a medical show on the radio or the internet. If you have a question, you're embarrassed to take your regular medical provider. If you can't find an answer anywhere else, give us a call at 347-766-4323. That's 347-POOHEAD. If you're listening to us live, the number is 754-227-3647. Follow us on Twitter at Weird Medicine or Lady Diagnosis or Dr. Scott WM. Visit our uh, website at drsteve.com for podcasts, medical news, and stuff that you can buy. Or go to our new merchandise store at cafepress.com slash weirdmedicine. I don't know how new it is. It's like 12 years old. Most importantly, you can get a Bristol Stool Scale mug and you can rate your turds while you're sitting on the pot drinking coffee. So I guess that's something. Most importantly, we are not your medical providers. Take everything here with a grain of salt. Don't act on anything you hear on this show without talking over with your doctor, nurse practitioner, physician assistant, pharmacist, chiropractor, acupuncturist, yoga master, physical therapist, or whatever. All right, very good. Uh, hey, don't forget to go to stuff.drsteve.com. That's stuff.drsteve.com for all your Amazon shopping needs. really helps to keep uh, Weird Medicine on the air and uh, keep uh, uh, Riotcast going. And don't forget tweakedaudio.com. Offer code FLUID, F-L-U-I-D, for the best earbuds for the price on the market and the best customer service anywhere. Cole, what's going on out there? I don't hear anything. <laughs> I got my new buddy Cole, and uh, he's here in the studio. Uh, we met at the uh, Rich Voss show, and uh, he's uh, uh, messing with my synthesizers while I'm putting this podcast together. <laughs> so I just wanted to have weird bleeps and bloops in the background for your uh, audio listening pleasure. Uh, don't forget Dr. Scott's website. It's simplyherbals.net. That's simplyherbals.net. And uh, if you want to lose weight with me, go to noom.drsteve.com. Now, listen, Noom is not a diet. It is an app. Uh, that deals with the psychology of eating. So in that regard, it is completely unique. I went from uh, almost 190 pounds down to 155, which is my ideal body weight. And I feel better than I have in a million years. And I even, when I went on vacation, just ate any damn thing I wanted to, knowing full well I was going to gain weight. I get home, I I didn't freak out when I saw how much weight I gained, and it was uh, significant. Uh, I just got right back on the program, and I'm on my way back down again. And uh, uh, I I don't want to be doing a yo-yo thing. It's just that I know that I can uh, blow it out my rear end every once in a while and still come back to my ideal body weight with no stress or pressure whatsoever. It is wonderful. It also has helped me be more mindful in my real life, too. So check it out at Noom dot dr steve dot com if you go there you'll get two weeks free and you'll also get 20 percent off the membership fee if you decide to do it you don't have to and um but if you do you get a group and a group counselor and you get to do the whole program the whole program is only uh three months so this is not something you have to do on and on and on and on again uh, you know, forever, unlike some other ones, like where you got points and stuff like that, and you have to have their proprietary calculator. There's none of that with this. Um, uh, you know, and I found that a lot of the chain restaurants now publish their caloric, uh, you know, the calories. I went to a place, and I saw that their salad the, had 1,200 calories in it. And then I realized, well, I can order um, uh, something different and or order it a different way to uh, be, I had no idea. You know, you go to these places, you think, well, I'm eating a salad. I'm eating healthy. Sometimes you are. Sometimes you aren't. So uh, I'm much more in tune with things now. And uh, my body feels better. So it's noom.drsteve.com. I am a huge fan of this. Um, 
Also, uh, part of my Noom thing is knowing how many calories I'm cramming down my gaping craw. So I use freshly.drsteve.com to uh, uh, because I'm lazy. I used to do Blue Apron, and I'd cut everything up and make it, and it was fun. It was really good, fresh ingredients and stuff. But I still love Blue Apron. Uh, then we used um, Tara's Kitchen for a while where everything was already pre-cut up for you. You just threw it in the pot. And uh, now I just have people make my food for me. So um, it's um, not for everybody, but I've really enjoyed Freshly.DrSteve.com. If you want to try it, you get 40 bucks off uh, your first uh, order of, uh, uh, I don't know how many dinners it is, but you get 40 bucks off. And uh, give it a try. Let me know if you like it. If you don't like it, it's fine. You just cancel. If you love it like I do, you just keep doing it. I have steak every week now through Freshly, and it's perfectly prepared, and I really enjoy it. Um, And if you want archives of this show, there's two ways you can do it. You can go to premium.drsteve.com, or uh, you can... um, uh, and, and at premium.drsteve.com for a buck ninety nine, and if you use offer code Fluid, it's half of that for three months. You have all the access to all the shows that we have, and the best way to listen to them is get the app from the App Store or from uh, Google Play. But you can just go to drsteve.com, put in your code, and then you can you have access to everything. And one thing you could do is just go download everything and then cancel your subscription another way to do it though for 30 bucks and that's also on our website at drsteve.com uh you just click a little thing and for 30 bucks i'll send you a 32 gig thumb drive with all the riotcast podcasts up to now and it's like 300 and some uh plus there may be some extra stuff in there if i you know accidentally throw in an interview with a you know, Flash Brown or a prostitute or something, because I've got some of those are in in uh, MP3 files that are stuck in there. So, um, uh, and that's at doc, uh, drsteve.com. Anyway, all right, so let's see what we've got today. Last week we had Rich Voss and uh, at this thing called Friends of Allendale. If longtime listeners of this show know this is the third year we've done this. We had Tim Dillon the first year, and then we had uh, Vic Henley. And this time, the legend, uh, Mr. Rich Voss, and uh, we had the biggest crowd that we've ever had. This amphitheater, it's an outdoor amphitheater, will hold 1,200 people. So even when there's 400 people there, it doesn't look like there's very many people there. uh, I've, I've got some pictures that sort of gave you an idea of the scale of this place. It is huge. And uh, the amphitheater dips way down as it goes toward the stage. So the closest people can get from the stage is about maybe 30 feet away. So it is a kind of a weird thing. But it the acoustics uh, for an outdoor amphitheater are amazing, and it's a beautiful property. Uh, the people uh, who run Allendale Mansion, you can look it up. It's A-L-L-A-N-D-A-L-E. It's in a little town near the Weird Medicine Studios called uh, Kingsport, Tennessee. And honestly, you know, we got Knoxville on one side and Asheville and uh, what? Um, hell, I mean, that's it. Nashville, four and a half hours away. This area has been starved for comedy. We have some local comedy, and uh, uh, but as far as bringing in people like Bobby Kelly, uh, Shuli Agar, um, Vic Henley, uh, Jim Florentine, that that caliber of people, uh, we've not had that in this area. So that's my commitment. I don't make any money at it. Don't make any money on this radio show either. I just want to do it just because. And. Um, I first did uh, got Florentine down here because I heard him on Opie and Anthony a long time ago talking about how um, comics get shit on on the um, on the road, and he said, "Yeah, they you know you have to eat off the comics menu, and it's a plain hamburger." And he was complaining that the the, the, the comedy club owners you know would limit what they could get for free because they're afraid they're going to somehow eat into their profits. And I know what they charge. You know, they've got a two-item minimum and all this kind of thing. They're making plenty of money. And uh, I know what they're paying the comedians, too. And it, it really hurt my feelings to know that friends of mine who should be treated like the rock stars that they truly are were being treated like shit like that. So, oh, 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 and I went to a comedy club 
I'm think, trying to think of the name. Oh, Side Splitters. It was Bobby Jewell's place in Knoxville. Very, it was a fun club. Uh, but, you know, they put them up in like the, there is right next door to a crack, a crack house. And they put them up in these crummy hotels. And, you know, that hurt my feelings, too. And uh, so I decided I'm going to bring my friends down or people that I highly regard and treat them right. We'll put them up in a decent place. So we have a, you know, a four star resort here. Um, you know, it, it, three star depending on your star, but it's a really nice place. It's a true, it's a resort. It's a Marriott resort, and uh, you know, it's got um, a swim center and a golf course, and you know, all the amenities that you would ever want. And um, we don't have a whole lot of prostitution around here, so there is that. I guess I, I guess that's a downside, maybe for some people. I don't know. Um, but, uh, so, and we put them up there and we have lady diagnosis to drive them around. And those of you who have not seen lady diagnosis, she's quite striking. She's, you know, supermodel, you know, aging supermodel, but a supermodel nonetheless. Um, and, uh, she drives them around and, uh, we take them out to eat to a nice restaurant. Now Voss was the first one. He's like, I don't want to go to some steakhouse. I can get that at home. Let's go get some Tennessee barbecue. So we took him to a place where he couldn't understand a damn thing anybody was saying um, because, the you know, it, it's the same language, but it's not really. I used to laugh when I'd see Honey Boo Boo on TV and Mama June, and they'd put subtitles under them. And I'm like, why are they putting subtitles under them? They're speaking pretty normally as far as I'm concerned. But uh, I guess that's not the case in the rest of the country. Uh, I do know podcast listeners for the longest time were trying to figure out what my mother-in-law was saying. Let me just play the opening and I'll get back to this. Um, uh, play the opening from the podcast because um, people have trouble understanding what my mother-in-law is saying here. Hang on. We're missing contains mature contents that uh, may be offended to some listeners. Let me write. <laughs> <laughs> What did they wrong then? It, you know, your old house is like an oven. All right. Now, anyone from south of the Mason-Dixon line understands everything that she said. It's like, and I'm going to give you a sentence that you can, it's a fun fact, a good party trick, that is uh, perfectly understandable in Appalachian English, but it has no corollary to regular English that any that uh, people outside of this area speak. So let me run through this, and I'll stop it as we go, and then we can uh, uh, decipher what Big Joe is saying. We're missing contains mature contents that uh, may be offended to some listeners. Let me run. Well, so she's saying weird medicine contains mature contents that uh, uh, may be Offended to some listeners. It's not, you know. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, oh no, wait a minute. Well, sorry. Oh, I'm pushing the wrong button. Contains mature contents that uh, may be offended to some listeners. Let me write that down. So you hear me go, let me write that down. It's way down in the mud, but that's I'm, I'm saying. Let me write that down because she just couldn't get it right. <laughs> <laughs> what did they wrong then? It, you know, you then she says, Hardy har har, what did I do wrong then? Y'all's house is like an oven. And then she says, you know, y- y'all's house is like an oven. In other words, it's hot up here. So anyway, now now that you know that, let me play it one more time, and now you'll understand it, and you've learned a little bit of uh, Appalachian English. All right, here we go. And then I'm going to tell you that sentence that's a good party, party trick. Hang on. We're missing contains mature contents that uh, may be offended to some listeners. Let me write <laughs> <laughs> What did they wrong then? It, you know, your old house is like an oven. The master of the non sequitur. <laughs> what did I do wrong then? You know, your old house is like an oven. When I come home, there's a, Big Joe's the most negative person I've ever met. Um, uh, whenever I come home, there's never, um, you know, hey, howdy do. You know, if she happens to be here, hey, Steve, how are you doing? It's always, your back lights are out. <laughs> so it's always some disaster. 
when I was uh, gone on vacation, she was house sitting, which is very nice. Of course, I paid her a lot of money to do it. And um, she, I bought three weeks worth of dog food, and she ran out of dog food in seven days. So, um, so what did what did she do? Her salute instead of calling me and saying what should I do, which I would have said, go buy this brand of dog food, and uh, I'll reimburse you. She went to the grocery store and bought this cheapo off brand. The cheapest, I, I mean, I think it was like 35 cents a can, and fed it to my dogs, and that night they shit all over everywhere. It was diarrhea everywhere. They were spraying the walls. I mean, it was it was insane. And she just called me up and said, well, you got a mess to clean up when you get home. It's like I do. Anyway, poor old Big Joe. I guess I've told enough Big Joe stories in this um uh, uh, on this show, if if you want to hear her in all of her glory, uh, go to uh, um, drsteve.com or riotcast.com or download the Weird Medicine app and listen to episode 100 where we did the Big Joe dating game, and it was full of Big Joe-isms. By the way, Big Joe thinks ricotta cheese is actually literally, well, called retardo cheese. She brought us a, a big lasagna. It was very nice. Nice thing to do. She's a good grandmother. Brought us a, you know, I brought this lasagna, and this, I made it with that retardo cheese. She's not trying to be funny. She thinks that's what it's called. Um, my wife was at McDonald's with her, and, you know, they have these uh, uh, f- McDonald's frappes now. And um, uh, my wife was standing in line with her mother, going to get a coffee at McDonald's. And this guy was standing behind the two of them talking to his friend. And he goes, I heard they got these new uh, coffee drinks here. I wonder what they're called. And my mother-in-law was going to school him. And she turned around and said, it's called a floopy. And I order one every day. So can you imagine Every single day she comes through this line and says, uh, I'll have me one of them floopies. And she drinks one every day. Of course, she's grossly overweight. She looks like a a basketball on top of a bigger basketball. And then she's drinking these these drinks that you know are at least 500 calories, maybe more, uh, to start out her day. But now she's got this guy calling him a floopy. So these poor people in the um, in the um, you know the cashiers in the takeout line or the uh, you know, whatever that line is whatever the fuck you call it uh, you might say well here comes that floopy lady every day well anyway that's Big Joe um, so we took Voss to a place where everybody talks like Big Joe he couldn't understand a thing that they said and yeah he got uh, barbecue and this place is I'll give them a plug it's called Phil's Dream Pit. And it's um, uh, between this Kingsport and Johnson City, Tennessee. And uh, that's this guy's dream was to make barbecue. And he makes some of the most incredible Tennessee barbecue I've ever had. Plus, he has the sauces for different areas. So if you like Texas barbecue, you can approximate it. North Carolina barbecue, you can make a close approximation with that as well. But it's fantastic. And uh, Voss really liked that. And so he gets to the venue. And of course, uh, I put some stuff on my Twitter. I put a couple of videos up there if you want to see them. And uh, just look at my timeline. It's at Weird Medicine. And, uh, you know, he was shitting on the venue, but he re- he had a great time. Um, the They loved him. And all the things that people say about Rich, I've never seen him live. I've seen him on video, and I always knew he was a good comedian. Uh, but, you know, uh, it, Opie, when he'd be shitting on Voss, um, um, uh, uh, Anthony would be shitting on Voss, Norton, but they all said... You can shit on him in real life because he's hilarious and it's fun to do, but he, it, there are very few people better than him on the stage. And as far as being quick, it's amazing how quick he is with the crowd work and then how easy Norton can just, just trash him in the studio. I, don't, I, I think it's part of the shtick. But anyway, uh, he, his crowd work was impeccable. And uh, we had a storm and, uh, you know, there was lightning and he could, you know, um, I, I, it doesn't matter. It, it was really good. It was good. But we had to cut this show maybe five minutes short because uh, we were all going to die um, 
uh, from uh, Lightning Strike because they were getting closer and closer. It was like, have you ever seen that movie, um, uh, the Spielberg version of War of the Worlds at the beginning where they had those weird, crazy storms when the the mothership was, in, you know, putting the aliens in the tripods? Uh, that's what it was like. It was kind of like that. And um, but he made the best of it. And it was a great show. So when we have these again, I hope and there were quite a few O&A and uh, quite a few weird medicine listeners there. Uh, it was great seeing everybody. I'm good to my word. If you come say hello, I'll buy you a beer as long as you're not, uh, you know, an alcoholic in recovery or, you know, not legal to have beer. But um, uh, it, it was just it was loads of fun. We will do it again. And uh, I'll keep you in the loop. So anyway, I will be very interested to see if he says anything on his podcast about his time in Tennessee. Um, There were two fans who listened to this show. And so they'll hear this. But they usually up. I guess they don't drink a whole lot of beer and they got wasted and they would not leave him alone. And he was so funny. He tolerated it. And I even apologize. They apologized afterward, too. I said, oh, God, I hope we weren't too up. Now, you know how you have one of those nights where you just you wake up the next morning. and Why was I so annoying? Well, anyway, um, but I, I apologized to him. I said, I didn't know if you wanted me to you know, intervene. Or he said, no, no, no. That's just part of it. And they were fine. They were just fans. So he really does appreciate his fans too and uh, they were very nice they were very appreciative of his work they just wouldn't shut the fuck up but anyway (laughs) and matt you know who you are all right um let's i've got a few um uh news stories for you and then a bunch of voicemails and then next week i've got a special show for you so don't miss that uh this one i've been seeing a lot on my twitter feed and i've seen a lot in my news feed doctors are urging women not to put popsicles up their vaginas to cool down during summer now um who did really i guess popsicles are shaped like things that you could put in the vagina so i guess somebody was thinking that's a cool idea um it's not a good idea because, uh, well, for a lot of, let me read this story and then I'll, I'll comment on it as well. It says, um, naturally, as many of us do, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we like to cool down by either going to a place that has the air conditioner at full blast, like the movie theater, or take a trip to the pool. This is not a good medical site. Let me see if I can find one that's an actual news story. This is someone's comment on it. I'm sorry. Um <clears throat> Let me see. Today's episode is brought to you by Angie. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs and projects done well. Let me tell you, there's the version of it where you try to do something at home, and then there's a version of it where you have someone help you, you watch them do it the right way, and you go, thank God I didn't try to do that myself. I have fully done things around the home that I think look good, and then a bang in the night, and I wake up to a shelf collapsing, a painting falling off the wall. Like it, I've, I've seen it all go south. I own a home and I can tell you, I know how much work it can take. Whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality, it can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Whatever your home project, big or small, indoor or outdoor, you can Angie that and connect with skilled professionals to get the project done well. Right now, one of my wish lists is I want a bike for my condo in Milwaukee and I would love to rig it up on a pulley in the ceiling because I have one of those like lofted ceilings, but I'm so scared to try that on my own. Angie has 20 years of home experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Um, scarymommy.com. Oh, well, let's see what they have to say. Oh, here's one. Doctor, uh, this is a UK site. Doctor urges women not to put ice lollies in their vagina. I didn't know in the UK they call them ice lollies. Um, here we go. No, and this is just another comment. Anyway, um, it's too cold. It's too cold. The The mucous membranes of the vagina are not prepared 
for something that is actually 32 degrees. And don't forget, um, ice is only 32 degrees when it's in equilibrium with water. In other words, if you put ice cubes in water, the overall temperature will be 32 degrees until all the ice melts, and then it will start to rise. So ice itself can be colder than 32 degrees. It can be so cold that if you jam it up your vagina, you can actually freeze the mucous membrane, and part of it may get frostbitten. It may slough off. So do not do this. If you've got to cool the inside of your vagina for some reason, and I don't even recommend this, but use you know a distilled water douche at room temperature because room temperature is still going to be colder than body temperature. And um, that do that. But I don't even like douching. OK, uh, so please don't do this. The other downside to it is you're you are um, inserting a, uh, a solid that turns into a liquid that's just basically sugar water. And what does yeast love? It loves sugar. Uh, bad bacteria love sugar. Now, the lactobacillus that's in there like sugar as well. But uh, you run the risk of uh, contaminating the vaginal flora with um, uh, bad bacteria and things that are going to eat this sugar and ferment it. And then you get gas and weird smells and stuff like that. So please don't do that. Okay. All right. Sorry I didn't vet that news story any better, but I could say it better than them anyway. All right. This is from Medical News Today. Protein discovery could lead to new hearing loss treatments. A new genetic study in mice, once again, mice get all the good stuff first, uh, has identified two proteins that help organize the development of hair cells that pick up sound waves in the inner ear. Now, this is a big deal because until now, so you've got this thing called the cochlea in there, and it, if you, uh, it's curled up like a snail. Uh, because it's so long that you got to, you know, otherwise it'd stick into your brain. So it's got to curl up. And uh, in there are these hairs at different lengths, and it's a resonant cavity. So uh, sound waves hit the tympanic membrane or your eardrum and vibrate those little, the um, the hammer anvil and, st- and stirrup. And then that uh, vibrates a little um, oval wall, a uh, li- little oval window. And then those sound waves that from that o- vibration of the oval window will travel however far they travel. So smaller sound waves uh, will go um, hmm, will they go farther or less less far? Okay. Well, anyway, they, they go based on the frequency. They'll vibrate these different hairs, right? So high frequencies will vibrate the high frequency hairs. Low frequencies, <clears throat> all of them including the low-frequency hairs. And then the brain can turn that into sound. Well, what we perceive as sound. I think you all, all of you understand that the world around us isn't the way we see it. I mean, it only is to the sense that we, in the sense that we perceive it. Yellow isn't yellow. It's just whatever it is, 560 nanograms of, of you know, wavelength of light, whatever the, the right um, wavelength is. And um, when when those wavelengths hit our eye, they trigger um, uh, cells in the retina that then uh, that are resonant to those frequencies. And then that sends a signal to the brain and says, well, this is yellow or this is green or this is blue. But they're just different frequencies of light. There's nothing inherently yellow or blue in those. If we had eyes that could see ultraviolet, then it would skew, you know, a different way. Or if we had eyes that could see infrared, you know, you'd need big giant eyes for that. So that's why the, you know, the if the grays are true and they've got those big giant eyes, uh, maybe they come from a uh, play, uh, you know, an ancient world that's. Um, um, uh, orbits a very dim red dwarf, and therefore they would need eyes that could that could see infrared. Um, uh, you know, who, you know, whatever. But uh, so, and the same thing is true with sound. These vibra- they're just vibrations in the air, and then our brain transmits this into um, uh, you know uh, circuits in the brain that will then 
interpret that as sound, and then we, when you hear my voice, <clears throat> if I construct my words properly, you can understand them. But they're really just vibrations in, of air molecules. So uh, when you have loud noises, so people that have been around uh, heavy machinery or they've been shooting guns, Anthony, without uh, hearing protection uh, and things like that, then uh, they can lose the hairs in that sense um, sounds. And once you lose them, that's it. They, if there's no vibration, there's no signal to the brain, there's no sound. <clears throat> and if you lose just a band of those, you'll have hearing loss in that band of frequencies. And uh, that can, again, happen with machinery or other things like that. So finding the proteins that help organize the development of hair cells that pick up sound waves in the inner ear, if we know that and we can regenerate these damn things, we can bring back hearing for people that have been rendered deaf um, or have difficulty understanding sound because they've lost acuity. You know, you can hear overall sound, but not have the resolution. It's almost like you've got a picture and it's pixelated. You know, if, if your vision was reduced to a pixelation, you'd have trouble uh, recognizing things. You still can see, but uh, you wouldn't be able to recognize things. This is the same thing that happens with people with certain kinds of hearing loss. They can hear sounds, but now all of a sudden they have a real hard time uh, uh, understanding spoken word and that kind of stuff. So uh, they can recognize a doorbell, but if they're in a party and someone's talking to them, they can't understand them. So this could be a huge step forward. This is incremental. You know, they found the proteins in mice. Now they got to figure out, can they manipulate them and can they make them grow hairs? And then they got to figure out a way to do it in humans and they got to figure out a way to do it safely. And then, of course, they got to figure out a way to monetize it to make it worth their while. So uh, this is uh, something that's coming. Until then, we've got the cochlear implants, which take the place of that. That sends a, an electrical signal to that nerve that says, oh, look, this this um, uh, uh, hair is vibrating when it really isn't. We're just fooling the brain into thinking that it's vibrating. So, all right. Um, there we go. The end of endoscopy. If you want to read about a uh, anesthesia-free endoscopy, go to my website at drsteve.com and just put in colonoscopy, and that article would come up. Uh, back when I was really enthused about doing the uh, podcast, or not the podcast, I'm very enthused about doing that and the show still. Um, when I was enthused about the website, though, I wrote this big, long article about how I had my um, colonoscopy without anesthesia. So if you want to read that, it's there. It's one of the few articles that I wrote. I did one on female ejaculation uh, versus uh, coital incontinence, and I've got one about Ebola and something else in there. So uh, you can just click on Steve's blog or you can just search around. Just click around in there. I've got some interesting things in there. And then, obviously, all the podcasts are in there. Uh, uh, but I, that may all be in vain in the future because Breakthrough Research showcases an innovative imaging technique that uses ultrasound to provide in-depth images in a non-invasive way. Now, I'm skeptical about this. There was a time when we thought that we could do um, endoscopy by using uh, computerized imaging. What you would do is basically take a CAT scan and then have an algorithm that would recreate a 3D image of the inside of the bowel. And then you could just um, kind of, in a virtual way, just kind of work your way through the bowel. It'd be cool to do it in virtual reality, do it in 3D and stuff, and then you could look at tumors, maybe touch them and mark them, and it would mark it on the on the film. Stuff like that would be really cool. That hasn't panned out too well. You still have to prep because it's hard to tell the difference between a turd and a polyp or a cancerous tumor. Uh, in something like that. So let's see what they have to say about this. Uh, obviously, endoscopy, currently one of the most common methods for medical imaging. I mean, okay, medical imaging. I guess, yeah, if you're taking video, it's it's a form of imaging. It's sort of direct imaging. Uses Its uses include diagnosing conditions that affect the lungs, the colon, the throat, and the gastrointestinal tract. And um, during an endoscopy, medical professionals, insert, hopefully medical professionals, insert an endoscope, a long, thin tube with a strong light and small camera at the end into a small opening such as the mouth or a tiny insertion, uh, insertion, incision that a surgeon makes. 
Um, now an innovative discovery may put an end to endoscopy altogether. I love this. This is already sounding clickbaity and it may put an end to endoscopy altogether. Uh, Mason Chumyansar, an assistant professor of electrical and computer engineering. Oh, that's what you want. Uh, so it's a, not an MD, um, but it, it, we have to have electrical and computer partners. I mean, M- MRI imaging was first developed by chemists and physicists. Well, physicists for chemists to um, look at uh, molecular bonds. I used NMR. We called it NMR back in the day, nuclear magnetic resonance, uh, nuclear magnetic resonance to look at organic molecules. It's a cool way. If you've got an unknown molecule, you can throw it in there. And uh, uh, basically what it does is it puts um, the hydrogen, well, it puts the whole set of molecules in a uh, very strong magnetic field. And uh, then you uh, in, inject microwaves, and what happens is the the in the magnetic field, the hydrogen atoms that are attached to all of these carbon atoms will start to um, uh, rotate together, and they will precess, just like a top. You know, a top kind of spins with its axis spinning around the room. Um, same way here, <clears throat> and these things will precess, and then when you add microwaves at a certain at sweeping frequencies the um uh, uh the hydrogen atoms will flip and this is all quantum stuff so i'm using sort of classical terms for this but they'll flip basically what they're doing is they're they're absorbing a photon of microwave uh wavelength of energy and uh they will flip and then when they release that photon back again they'll kind of uh resonate and they'll bounce back and then they'll grab another one bounce back and forth back and forth back and forth and then that signal you can read that secondary signal and you can tell by the energy of the microwave um, radiation and then the energy that they're giving off uh, what those hydrogen atoms are attached to and it was a really cool way of um, of determining the structure of a molecule What's really cool is that you can then turn around and image things with that. You put the whole body in a strong magnetic field, and then you do the same. They sweep through with these microwaves, and as those hydrogen atoms start giving off their secondary uh, photons, um, uh, you can detect them, and then you can create an image from that. And that image is amazingly almost photorealistic. It's really neat and uh, way less likely to cause a solid tumor than, say, a CAT scan, Um, although they've gotten better with that because the CAT scans now use very low amounts of radiation, but still. Uh, um, So the MRI is really cool. Well, anyway, um, uh, why am I telling you this? Oh, now I lost my train of thought because I'm so fascinated by, by, um, uh, you know, the physics of this whole thing. Well, anyway, let me... Go back. Um, uh, an innovative discovery may put an endo- endoscopy altogether. Um, uh, they devised a non-invasive ultrasound imaging technique that promises to replace the endoscope. And uh, they, oh, oh, I know why I was bringing this up because these two knuckleheads are um, el- computer engineers. But we need them because MDs or MDs most of the time they're not computer engineers. So you've got to find a a, a way to turn this data into imaging, and that's a computer application. Back in the day, they were mainframe computers. Now you can run most of these things on a PC, which is quite an, uh, amazing to me. Uh, they detailed their novel technique in the journal Light Science and Applications. So what we have to do now is let uh, um, gastroenterologists, who are pretty savvy in imaging, do this and see if it's actually acceptable and see if we need to shift our gold standard from direct imaging with a endoscope and um, uh, go to indirect imaging. And they're they're going to be hesitant to do that because number one, that for there are some gastroenterologists that's all they do is do endoscopies all day. They don't want a new technology that's going to take that away from them unless, of course, they can make a bunch of money off of it. So you'll have. The radiologists going, oh, yeah, 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 this is awesome. And then the endoscopist going, oh, wait, this is bullshit. And there's, you know, some political stuff. 
In the meantime, the patient's kind of caught in between because really what we want ultimately is what's best for the patient, right? And uh, which one of these is going to catch tumors uh, uh, better and um, will reduce deaths from um, uh, from cancer or other things that you're looking for with these things and is going to be least invasive for the patient. So let's say they're both equal. And this one's less invasive and less expensive. That's what we're going to go for. Uh, but proving that something is better than the gold standard is hard to do because you're always comparing it against the gold standard. So you can do it, but it's more difficult. Anyway, um, okay, so their biological tissue being a turbid or dense and opaque medium limits the possibilities of optical methods. Uh, specifically, the tissue is made of large particles and membranes and restricts the depths and resolution of optical imagery, especially in the visible and near-infrared range and near spectrum. Well, yeah, okay, that's why we don't use those kinds of imaging techniques uh, from the outside. But the new technique, however, uses ultrasound to devise a virtual lens in the body instead of in- inserting a physical one. The operator can then adjust the lens by changing the ultrasonic pressure waves inside the medium. And so take in-depth images that were never accessible before using non-invasive means. Ultrasound waves can compress or rarefy the medium that they penetrate. And then what they do is they bounce back. And uh, you can, uh, by detecting that bounce back, you can um, make an image out of that. Light travels more slowly through compressed media and more quickly in rarefied media. Well, who cares? We're not talking about light. Um, They were able to create the virtual lens by causing this compression rarefaction effect As the ultrasonic waves propagate through the medium, they modulate its density and hence its local refractive index. I'll explain what I need to when I'm done with all this jargon. The medium is compressed in the high pressure regions, resulting in a higher density while it's rarefied in the negative pressure areas where the local density is reduced. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, You know, there's going to be more uh, resistance and compression in the areas where there's higher density. It makes perfect sense. Uh, As a result, the pressure standing wave creates a local refractive index contrast. Okay, so what? Come on, tell us what you're going to do with this. Uh, We used ultrasound waves to sculpt a virtual optical relay lens within the given target medium, which, for example, can be biologic tissue. Therefore, the tissue is turned into a lens that helps us capture and relay the images of deeper structures. Well, we do this with ultrasound already. Now, how are you going to show me the inside of a colon, though, to see if there's um, a turd in there or a um, a polyp? Um, Let's see. What distinguishes our work from conventional acoustico-optic methods is that we are using the target medium itself, which can be biological tissue to affect light as it propagates. What the hell are they talking about? This in situ interaction provides opportunities to counterbalance the obstacles that disturb the trajectory of light. What in the hell? Um they're saying here simply by by applying it on the surface of the skin, healthcare professionals could obtain images of internal organs without potential side effects and imp- unpleasantness of an endoscopy. Well, I they have not sold me on this one bit. Uh, this seems very preliminary and sort of proof of concept. And I don't know why they're talking about sound waves and then turning around and talking about light. So uh, either this article is very poorly written or they haven't gotten anywhere. Anyway, um, hang on a second. I'm going to explain why I read you an article that I didn't know what the hell it was, but i got to get this on here. Tacey, you're on Weird Medicine. Yeah, that's what I thought. So she just hangs up. It's just a coincidence that she calls every time. Um, I wanted you to kind of see how we as physicians have to look at this stuff. And when we first read an article... And walk through it. I've done this on, uh, I used to do it on, um, uh, we had a, um, well, where was it? Oh, it was the opianthony.net. I answered questions over there for a while. <clears throat> and then uh, ronfez.net. I did it there. And now I'm on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash dr steve. And uh, every once in a while I'll take an article and then um, just parse the sentences and uh 
just show you how an MD or a DO or a PA or NP uh, thinks about these things as they're walking their way through an article. And I am uh, very unimpressed by this. I'm going to have to see a lot more. And uh, uh, again, this sounds like some physicists came up with something sort of like when they had chemists come up with cold fusion and all the physicists were like, oh, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, and it turned out to be bullshit. Uh, now we have um, an electrical engineer coming up with a medical technique that doesn't seem to make any sense to me whatsoever, so we'll see. Um, by the way, uh, get your hepatitis A vaccine, particularly if you live in Florida. It says hepatitis A is a viral disease that used to be fairly uncommon in the United States. This year, this year however, cases of hepatitis A have escalated to a worrying degree. Uh, this month, Florida has declared hepatitis A a health emergency. Uh, hepatitis A, as you would imagine, is a disease that affects the liver. And it uh, can occur when somebody drinks water, eats food that was contaminated by the fecal matter of another person infected by hepatitis A. So a lot of times this happens when uh, food, people who handle food have hepatitis A and it causes diarrhea and they shit and then they don't wash their hands uh, effectively and then they touch your food and then you get it from that. Um you could also get it through unprotected oral or anal sex. Uh, it triggers simple, symptoms similar to those of the flu, and it can be mild. Uh, you might just think you had a puke bug that lasted a little longer than you thought, and then all of a sudden, one day, maybe a week or two weeks later, um, you get uh, yellowish skin and you get jaundice, and uh, that's when it becomes uh, uh, on the radar screen of your local hepatologist. And um, throughout Europe and the United States, there have been rel recently very few cases of the disease, and it's preventable through vaccination. In the last year, however, various regions of the United States have witnessed a steep rise in the number of hepatitis A cases. And the state of Florida has declared a viral disease a public health emergency. So there were uh, 2,586 new cases of hepatitis A, which is... Which, of which 72% required hospitalization. So that's a big number. Let's see how many that is. Let's ask, um, ooh, let's ask Alexa. Alexa, what's 72% of 2,586? Is she there? Alexa, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I listen once I hear the wake word. Oh, okay. Alexa, what's 72% of seven? Oh, shit. Never mind. <laughs> this might answer your question. No, 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 no. Alexa, stop. Alexa, what's 72% of 2,586? 72% of 2,586 is 1,861.92. Okay. So a lot, it's a lot of effort for nothing. Um, a lot of patients uh, required hospitalization, and 65 new cases occurred in the past two weeks alone. So that's a steep increase from the year before when there was a total of a total of 548 cases. So that, motion detected at the front door. Yeah, that will be. Um, <laughs> Someone is at the front door. All right. Well, okay. Let's just say hello. I told them to just come in, and let's see if they'll do it. Um, this is fascinating. It's very professional. Um, here we go. Let's go live. Oh, I don't know if this is going to work. There we go. Hey, man, just come on in. Just come on in. Come up to the third floor. All right. All right. Um... Uh, yeah, so it's a steep increase from the year before when there was a total of 548 cases. So let's figure this out. Um, Alexa, what's 2586 divided by 548? 2586 divided by 548 is 4.719. Yeah, so it's almost five times more cases than they were used to. And uh, the Florida Surgeon General... Uh, Dr. Scott Rivkeys said, I'm declaring this a public health emergency, 
as a proactive step to appropriately alert the public to the serious illness and prevent further spread of hepatitis A in our state. And uh, it's unclear why the cases of hepatitis A have increased at such an alarming rate, uh, but officials are looking into the matter. Health emergency will allow them to invest more money into testing and treatment of the disease. <clears throat> uh, hepatitis A is a two-step um, uh, uh, vaccine. You get one, and then I think it's six months later you get another one. Just talk to your primary care. This is a disease. Nobody needs to get this. And as the cases are increasing, it increases the need to uh, vac- get yourself vaccinated. And um, I've never heard anyone complaining about this vaccine, you know, being uh, causing any adverse events. Let's see what the adverse events are with the hepatitis vaccine. Hepatitis. And you can just go to the CDC. Um, somebody did bring up that the CDC um, does own the patent for some uh, vaccines and that they are therefore... Um, they may have a conflict of interest. I looked this up. The the vaccines that they hold the patent on that they actually sell are for orphan uh, diseases for the most part, uh, very rare diseases that no uh, manufacturer is going to do any research on. You know, uh, the federal government does some things for vaccines that they don't do for other um, uh industries. So for the vaccine industry, they're, they've created a fund. Yeah, and I hear this one from the anti-vaxxers, too, where they've created a fund uh, to pay off uh, vaccine adverse events, okay? Because there are going to be some. Nothing is 100% uh, safe. and But they, um, they are generally safe, and these adverse reactions, though they can be tragic, are exceedingly rare. And the benefit to society far outweighs any risk. But the reason that they have this vaccine, it's not some uh, vaccine payoff fund. It's not some secret thing. It's you just Google it and find out all you want to find out about it. Um, it's not secret. They The government is doing it. Because if they didn't do it, these vaccine manufacturers would just throw up their hands and say, there's more profitable stuff out there. We're not messing with all these lawsuits, particularly the frivolous ones. So uh, they've given a buffer to them so they can just make the vaccines, get them out there, and uh, get people uh, protected. So um, uh, let's see what the adverse events on uh, Uh, hepatitis A. So hepatitis A, vaccine preventable communicable disease of the liver caused by hepatitis A virus, usually transmitted person to person through fecal oral route. And by the way, this was on my boards recently. Uh, The most common vaccine preventable uh, disease, if you're going to, uh, say, rural Costa Rica or something like that, they're going to recommend that you get hepatitis A in addition to things like yellow fever and things like that. It says, uh, usually resolves within two months of infection. Most children less than six years of age do not have symptoms or have an unrecognized infection. So there's some benefit to being little. Uh, Antibodies produced in response to hepatitis A infection last for life and protect against reinfection. So if you get it once, you won't get it again. But the best way to prevent it is to get vaccinated. And um, I'm just looking for adverse events on this. Um, Eh, I can't. Uh, yeah, I could have prepared for this better too. So, anyway, just look it up. How about that? Do you do some research? Look it up. the The adverse I had it. Uh, the Shingrix vaccine kicked my ass. The hepatitis A vaccine never knew that I took it. So, they will be mild and self limited. Okay, let's take a couple of phone calls while we're still here. And uh, Cole is here. It's Cole, right? Yes, sir. And uh, I'll get you on mic here in a second. You'll be on the next show. But, yeah, that's your mic right there. So um, you came to the Voss thing. I did. Oh, uh, can you turn your mic on? There's a little switch there that says on, off. You're a pretty smart little feller. Pretty fart smeller, as we say in Tennessee. You got it? I think I there got go. it. There you go. There so you go. were at the Voss thing, right? Absolutely. What would you think? It was good. Yeah, it was uh and uh, did you get to talk to Voss afterward? A little bit afterwards. Yeah, see, he was great. He's great. He's awesome to his fans. I was telling everybody there were two people at the at Meadowview that had had a few too many, and they were just all over him. And he was just trashing them. And half the time they didn't weren't even aware of it. And I kind of apologized to him. And he said, no, they're just fans. They're fine. You know, he's totally cool. Yeah, well, my mom told me she's like, uh, 
this guy named like Voss something is coming. You oh know, yeah. Down at, she's like, you know, you where where you got married? I was like, okay, cool. And it, I was like, wait, who was it? <laughs> and she said, Rich Voss. I was like, okay, okay. I know the gentleman. <laughs> I said we can go indulge in there. And <laughs> did you, did you bring and, friends? Oh, well, my wife, my pregnant wife, and my mom. Uh, yeah. I just moved back, so okay, cool. I'm back to the area. Cool, so. but you're an old school opium Anthony oh, fan, yes. right? Oh yeah, now, yeah, yes, yeah. and so. that's that's one thing that I noticed. I was like, uh, I was yeah, like, there I were know a, exactly who he is. Yeah, there like, were a few of us there, and uh, he was just great. I mean, it was such a great show, and people love to shit on Voss, and he'll block him online because you know people in the studio will trash him. Like Patrice used to just love to trash him. Every it's fun. Yeah. But, you know, so the listeners start thinking, well, we can do that, too. And when they do that, um, you know, he just blocks them, which I think is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> but in person, he was just delightful. He was. And we got was. to hang out with him for a couple of days. And uh, I, would, yeah, I, I really feel like, I mean, Rich and I have talked for years, but now I feel like now we're actually friends. And maybe... But he would probably dispute that. But um, you know, I, I uh, it was just really cool having him here. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was fun. I was actually very happy to see him. Yes, yeah, and so was the and the crowd. That was the biggest crowd we've ever had there. That amphitheater holds twelve hundred people, so it never looks like there's a lot of people there. But there were about four hundred there for this. Yes, absolutely. And so it, it was a pretty big event. I mean, I know we can get more crap load of people that had no idea who he was. But, um, you know, every year it's gotten bigger and bigger, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, the Friends of Allendale that run that thing want to have people there other than just their regular bluegrass crowd. Exactly. And that was what they wanted. They, they used to do bluegrass four Thursdays in a row in August, and they just get the same hundred people. You know, so we've got four times the crowd now that they've gotten, and there's people that have never been to Allendale before. They just want people to enjoy it. That's why they make it free. You know, they have the funds to, to you know, to pay the comics their going rate and um, take good care of them and all that stuff. So, Funny thing is, uh, right down next to the porta potties, uh, I got married right there. Oh, really? Yeah, so just... To the left of the porta potty. Oh, that's cool. uh, there were porta potties right there. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. Well, we <laughs> we got to use a real bathroom, but anyway, because <laughs> because we're fancy. Well, I have no time to take phone calls. So uh, next week, what we're going to be doing is we're going to have Cody Gilmer from Indie Ghost on, and his girlfriend's coming. We had a weird medical thing happen to her. And then we'll uh, talk to Cole some more, and then we'll, we're going to do a crap load of phone calls that I didn't get to this time. Thanks always go to uh, Dr. Scott, who isn't here. We can't forget Rob Sprantz, Bob Kelly, Greg Hughes, Anthony Cumia, Jim Norton, Travis Tepp, Lewis Johnson, Paul Ofcharsky, Eric Nagel, Roland Campos, Sam Roberts, Pat Duffy, Dennis Falcone, Ron Bennington, and Fez Watley, who's an early supporter of the show, has never gone unappreciated. Listen to our Sirius XM show on the Faction Talk channel, Sirius XM channel 103, Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern, on demand, and other times at Jim McClure's pleasure. Many thanks to our listeners whose voicemail and topic ideas make this job very easy. Go to our website at drsteve.com for schedules and podcasts and other crap. Until next time, check your stupid nuts for lumps, quit smoking, get off your asses, and get some exercise. We'll see you in one week for the next edition of Weird Medicine.